Hi, I'm Richard Stokes, Superintendent of Carson City School District. It's my pleasure to greet you and to welcome you back to another school year. As you can see, this is going to be a year that is different from others. If you're a veteran returning teacher, uh, some things will look a little like school. If you are new to the district or if you are new to the profession, things may not be exactly what you have expected. Regardless, I am excited to see you and to welcome you back. We have put together a series of um, experts and information that we hope will help you get ready for the coming school year because it is rather unique. And in making this claim of uniqueness, please understand that a lot of what we're doing when school starts might look different as soon as the second week of school. As you know, the conditions and uh, situations that are associated with COVID-19, uh, those things have changed rapidly and continue to change rapidly. And we are adapting quickly as we move from day to day. Think of all the things that you've ever thought of from a, an, an education perspective. We have policy, we have practices, we have regulations. Many of those things are changing daily. And so now we're making decisions and providing information that are part of just the new situation and the new conditions that we're changing. So we ask for your patience. We ask for your understanding. We ask for your help in trying to determine the best way to continue doing what we do, and that's educating our students. So welcome back to this exciting year, to this year that will be different, to this year that will change. I think that um, you probably have seen in the national news and state news, and certainly now in local news, that there's a very good chance that um, our schools could be closed again, depending on the health conditions of our local area. At the same time, we could hit some point in the near future where we're able to go back to school in face-to-face, 100% uh, education as we know it. Um, until then, we ask for your help, for your cooperation, and certainly for your support as we go through our, our regular activities of school. So for your information, here's a few things that I hope will help. Please know that um, all of the changes that have occurred are uh, large and uh, there are many. And so to try to get into all of those situations in one sitting is probably not going to be easy to do. If you have questions, I invite you to first contact your building principal. Um, if they don't have the information, by all means, I welcome you to contact me and we'll do our very best to try and find a response to your concerns or to your questions. First off, uh, the important stuff. Our teachers are expected back on Wednesday, August the 12th. And we have modified our school calendar just a little bit. And the State Department of Education gave us the opportunity to take our original first day of students, which was August the 17th, and to utilize that week, the 17th through the 21st, as a time to provide additional training for teachers. Because of the fact that we will be using a hybrid model, which means part of our teaching time will be done uh, in person and face to face with our students, another part of our teaching will be done remotely. And so we wanted to be able to spend time providing training on how to provide instruction from a remote platform to our teachers. So again, that will take place August 17th through the 21st. And the first day for our meeting with students will be on Monday, August the 24th. Now because our hybrid schedule requires that every Monday, two cohort models will actually be at home on Mondays. So you'll be contacting your students on the very first day in a homeroom setting, and those homeroom rooms will be established by your building principal. But that'll be a time for you to reach out to your students initially, uh, get to know them from 
using the Google Meets software and um, getting to know them. If you think about our students, they have essentially been out of school for almost six months. This is the first time ever in my career, and I'll bet it is in yours too, where we have had that length of time between sessions with our students. Consequently, it's gonna be really important that we get to know our students well, that we plan academically for them, that we plan to help them with social and emotional situations that they might be facing. It'll be critical to find those places in their academic lives that might need shined up a little bit, that might need some guidance and some support. So a uh, very critical time for our students and certainly a time for you as teachers, as building professionals, to do your very best to assist and to help our students. Um, because of COVID-19, we are trying to limit and restrict the number of large gatherings. So the first part of the school district uh, year and the school year is going to look a little different. We're not encouraging large scale um, events. So if your building is scaling back the back to school nights or the meet and greet nights, recognize that this is an effort to try and keep people from um, coming in too close a proximity with each other. Obviously, we're trying to maintain social distancing and uh, we're also going to ask that people visiting the schools, uh, especially our staff, also our students, and of course anyone else, wear your face masks. We are trying to uh, keep everyone safe and to limit the exposure to COVID-19 as well as we can. I'd also like to let you know that we are not going to be encouraging field trips at least for the first nine weeks, maybe longer. We're anxious again that we limit opportunities for students to come into uh, contact with other individuals where there, there could be an exposure situation. So um, make sure you consider that uh, field trips will not be approved for the first nine weeks but they may be later on in the school year. So just kind of keep track of what's going on there and we'll certainly make that information known if it changes. Um, from a secondary perspective, you probably have heard already that fall activities are also canceled. So the NIAA across the state have um, pushed back all of the fall activities until the winter. We're hoping that sometime right after Christmas, maybe the Christmas break, that activities will be something can, that can be reinstated. And uh, of course we know that those are important to the well-being of our students and certainly to the uh, energy and activity that we feel as part of our schools. So watch there and we hope that those activities are able to be returned soon. Um, Again, if, if you have any questions about um, the school year, um, I invite you to uh, first contact your principals, then by all means reach out to me if you still are looking for help. Uh, a lot of our uh, services are being changed. Uh, for example, our special education students, um, there's going to need to be uh, some special consideration done there. It's been some time since uh, our IEPs have been revisited. And for added information on how to work with your special education students, please again talk with your uh, site administrators. If there's a specific question that you have, please reach out to Dr. Christy Lennox and she'll be able to help you. Her telephone number is 283-2350. So keep in mind, folks, that uh, our school year will be subject to change. I think that's a guarantee. Um, I encourage you to be flexible. I encourage you to come into the school year with a, with a happy attitude, with um, the ability to remain cautious, but at the same time, use all of those great reasons for which you got into teaching in the first place to benefit the lives of our students and to help them. Um, 
we're going to try and approach all of the work we do this year with a sense of um, not only urgency, but also common sense. We want to do things for the right reason. We want to be sensitive to the situation and the conditions that our staff members, that our families, and that our students are, are uh, dealing with right now. And it's tough. Um, but we are in this thing together. I know that's kind of a trite expression these days, but it truly is the case. I think if we're sensitive to the needs of each other, if we try to look out for each other's well-being, we'll be in a good place and we can do the things that we've always done in our school district, that's support each other and have a top-notch education program. So welcome back. Again, if there's something that I can do that will assist you in your work as a teacher or a staff member in our school district, I invite you to contact me. In the meantime, have a great school year and I hope all goes well. Hello, I'm Mike Walker, president of the Carson City School Board. And these are real challenging times. And I think one of the things that we've really seen in the last six, seven months is the importance of education to our communities. And most importantly, the role that educators play. We're not just teaching reading and writing. We're teaching reading and writing, we're feeding children, we're giving children clothes, and we're providing emotional support. So it's really important that we understand our role in providing for these children. But we also wanna make sure that our students and our staff are safe. So our district is working very closely with the health department, the leaders at the Department of Education, and the governor's office to make sure that we're establishing practices which are in line with state guidelines and best for our students and staff. We currently have a plan in place that will allow students to come into the building a limited number of days and receive digital learning at home. There is also options for students to learn digitally 100% of the time. And we also have a plan in place to get back to normal 100% in the buildings when conditions are right. We really appreciate the work everyone does, and we thank you. Hi, I'm Andrew Fueling. I'm the fiscal director for the Carson City School District. Um, we've had a, an interesting uh, year with the impact of COVID and uh, what that's done to our schools, and it's been especially impactful on the, the financial side of things for the district. Um, the state, when they had a $1.2 billion revenue shortfall, had to cut significantly from education, and the Carson City School District was significantly impacted by this. Um, fortunately, uh, because of a lot of work of good people here in the district, we've been able to maintain and manage uh, to continue uh, most of our programming here in the district. So we hope that we can still provide um, the, the level of quality and, and level of service to our uh, students uh, with the exceptional staff that we have as we continue through these difficult times. Hello, my name is Mark Kornick. I'm the Director of Operations for Carson City School District. I wanted to just tell you a little bit about our cleaning process that we'll be engaging in in uh, this school year. First of all, we already, already have a uh, excellent, successful process cleaning program. We're going to continue that in, in certain stages during this. But the first thing we're going to do is, is strip all of the surfaces down so that we can put a bio layer underneath. This is called BioProtect. And that'll be dispensed onto surfaces with an electrostatic sprayer. After that is done, we will be doing regular cleaning during the week, two days a week with our regular process cleaning disinfectant program, and two days a week with a electrostatic uh, disinfecting program. We'll also be electrostatic uh, spraying all of our common areas four days a week, and these are multi-purpose rooms, hallways, nurses areas, and clinics. And 
once or twice a month, we also will be stripping down all the surfaces again to get all of those bio layers off, and then we'll repeat the process. Uh, we feel that this will be a successful program, and we hope that uh, our teachers are confident in their classrooms uh, with this program. As far as uh, HVAC, air filtrations, etc., we've engaged a HVAC and energy specialist to put together a protocol for us to have proper air quality in our uh, educational areas. And so we will be doing a pre and a post occupancy air flush in all of our buildings and uh, we want to achieve three full building air exchanges per day in these processes. We will also be upgrading our filtration system to a MERV 13 filter and this will be done quarterly. We'll be changing those filters quarterly. Hi, I'm Ann Sear. I'm the risk manager for the Carson City School District. I'm here at Carson High School and I'm with Sheila Story. I'm a registered nurse and I'm the chief nurse for the Carson City School District. We'd like to talk with you a little bit about what we're doing to open our schools safely this fall. The district is following all CDC and OSHA guidelines in all of our operations. Examples of CDC guidelines being implemented are the placement of hand sanitizer stations at all entrances, public communication posters, floor decals, and wayfinding directions. The health offices are working closely with the local health department and adhering to all the National Association of School Nurse Protocols. Employee safety stations have been designated in staff restrooms equipped with no-touch thermometers and instructional posters advising employees what to do if they develop COVID-like symptoms while at work. Return to work protocols have been developed and will be coordinated through the Human Resources Department. In accordance with the National Association of School Nurse Protocols, a secondary health office has been designated for each school. Students who are developing COVID-like symptoms will wait in these rooms for their parents or guardians to pick them up as soon as possible. Information will be provided on the steps to take to contact the local health department. The local health department will work closely with your family in letting you know when your student is allowed to return back to school or a note from your physician. Students who come to the health office for first aid or other assistance will have their temperature taken with a no touch thermometer. Flu vaccinations will not be given in the schools this year. Further information regarding flu vaccinations will be forthcoming from your local health department. Vaccinations, however, are still required for both online and hybrid learning models. School nurses will be contacting families to offer resources if immunizations are required. Please help us keep our school community safe and healthy. Stay home when you're not feeling well. And wear a mask and wash your hands frequently. And remember to socially distance. Together, we can open our schools safely. Hello, my name is Cherie Fletcher. I'm the Transportation Director for the Carson City School District. We're excited to start school here in less than two weeks. And a few points I wanted to go over. When your students arrive, make sure you did a temperature check at home. And if they are feeling ill or do have a fever, please make sure they stay home. At the bus stop, maintain social distancing while wearing masks. When you board the bus, please load from the back to the front and only sit in seats that are not marked off with a tape. Have a great year. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Snyder. I am the Director of Nutrition for the Carson City School District, and it's our pleasure to be serving you all this year. Um, I just wanted to let you know about a couple changes that you can expect this uh, school year 2021. Some changes that students will see in the cafeteria will include there will be fewer options at first, but hopefully by the end of the school year, we will add additional options. We do have a trained chef on staff who will be preparing a lot of new and exciting menu options for our students. There'll be fewer people at any given time in the cafeteria. 
and depending on which school they attend, children might get their food in the cafeteria and take it back to the classroom or they might eat in the cafeteria. Again, that depends on which school they're at. Water fountains will be turned off. Water bottle fill stations will be available throughout the school, so students will need to have a water bottle. At the beginning of the year, we will provide a path water water bottle that is reusable and refillable. Some things to expect during breakfast and lunch. Every site's gonna be a little bit different, but at all sites, there will be social distancing in the cafeteria. At elementary schools, breakfast will be available for all students, either when they arrive to class or on their way into the building, again, depending on their site. At Mark Twain, Fremont, and Empire Elementary Schools, this will be provided free of charge. At Seeliger, Fritch, and Bordwick, students will be rung up per their free, reduced, or paid status. At Pioneer, students will have a chance at a regular breakfast in the cafeteria or a second chance breakfast during first period. And at Eagle Valley Middle School, Carson Middle School, and Carson High School, breakfast and lunch will be available in the cafeteria like it has been historically. Students will receive breakfast and lunch for days that they are not physically attending school. On days they attend in-class instruction, students will be asked during attendance if they want meals for the next day. Teachers will send this information to the kitchen, and at the end of the day, students will either stop by the cafeteria on their way out of school, or meals will be dropped off to their classroom, again, depending on their school. Meals will be provided breakfast and lunch together for distance learning days and meals will be rung up per their paid, reduced, or free status. If your student was free or reduced status last year, they will be this year until October 6th. Please turn in an application before October 6th so as to not disrupt your child's meal service. For 100% distance learners, please contact the Nutrition Department at 775-283-2150 to discuss meal pickup options. We will be handling these on a case-by-case -case basis. Hello, Carson City School District staff. Welcome to the new school year. I know this is a different year from any other year we've ever had. I can tell you in any other time in U.S. educational history, uh, this is the cleanest our school district or any school district has ever been in the history of man as we know it. Uh, we have definitely scrubbed and cleaned every room and office, classroom, what have you, all throughout the district. So uh, you're in great hands and you're in safe spaces as we move forward through this pandemic. I also want to let you know that we have over 1,000 full and part-time staff that um, help move our district forward for the sake of our students. And I'm happy to say that we've got all our staff ready to go for the new school year. Uh, we're excited to have kids back and uh, filling up our classrooms with energy and um, really looking forward to moving their knowledge forward as we go through this uh, new way of teaching and learning. So we spent the summer getting ready for staff and I know that many have questions regarding the pandemic and what their options are with regard to leave. We have uh, published that information out on the website by the time of this video and we're also going to send out our memos via email to each staff member. So feel free to take a look at our uh, guidance documents for all those details. They're subject to change at any time because those are these are the times that we live in. So I encourage you to work uh, with the HR staff on any of your unique circumstances that might happen throughout the year. And we wanna do that with a personal touch because we know each of your circumstances are personal and we want to protect your privacy throughout anything that we need to help you with. Welcome back Carson City School District family and friends. I'm Tasha Fuson, the Associate Superintendent of Educational Services. We are so excited to be coming back this school year. We've been working hard over the summer to put together our reopening plan and to prepare for our new model of hybrid and remote learning for our students. In order to support our teachers and staff in transitioning to this new model, we have put together a comprehensive professional learning program that will run from August 12th through the 21st. 
Faculty and staff members will be engaged in both synchronous and asynchronous learning in a digital environment and also in person. Professional learning topics will include information about COVID-19 in the workplace, reporting, procedures and requirements, as well as tools and strategies for effectively teaching in both a hybrid and a remote learning environment. We have purchased several tools for our, to help support our teachers in their work, such as Screencastify, which is a Chrome browser extension that allows teachers to record themselves um, giving instruction. Um, you can also do a voiceover for a PowerPoint presentation and then post it into the Google Classroom. We have purchased Kami, which is an online document annotation tool that allows students to highlight texts, to be able to annotate documents, and also allows our teachers to create digital PDFs from any instruction materials that you have. We also have purchased Zoom for uh, video conferencing Zoom allows our teachers to do breakout rooms for students and to be able to screen share and um, really enhance instruction. We also have purchased Parent Square. Parent Square is a two-way parent communication tool that allows teachers to send out notifications to students and parents and for parents to respond back. These professional tools, as well as many others, uh, will be highlighted in our professional learning opportunities for teachers. We will also be providing those opportunities for families. So using our parent page on our district's website, uh, parents can learn more about these tools and how to support their students at home. In order to make access to these tools even easier for our students and our staff, links to the professional learning opportunities and videos will be put on our teacher dashboards, as well as links for students and staff to access on the teacher dashboard as well as the student dashboard. We know that this is going to be an exceptional year for all of us. We're embarking on transforming teaching and learning for this new digital age. But I know our administrators, our faculty, our staff, our students, and our parents are able to embrace this and are up for the challenge. So have a wonderful year, Carson City. We look forward to embarking on our new remote learning and hybrid learning models. Hello. I hope you've enjoyed the video segments that were part of this back to school welcome. We're really grateful that you're part of our organization. We look forward to working with you throughout the school year. Just to give you some sense of where we are uh, with our hybrid model, about 25% of our students, and last year we enrolled right around 7,700 students, about 25% of those students are actually choosing, they're electing, to work from home in a 100% remote teaching and learning scenario. So that's going to make our, our daily classes look different. Then with our cohort numbers, you can expect about half of that number to be in our schools. And um, that means we're going to have students in our buildings on Tuesday and Thursday and then the other half of our student body will be in our building on Wednesday and Friday. So again, our, our buildings, our school day is going to look very different. In addition, we have about 100 students so far who they and their families have said, we are going to elect to do homeschooling. So between these three different processes, you can expect to see differences in our schools. And so I invite you to learn as much as you can uh, take the information that you've learned here from this video, ask questions, become involved, and again, seek ways that you can uh, go above and beyond like we always have in our school district for the betterment of education in Nevada and also for our students' well-being here in Carson City. I hope you have a great school year. Thanks again for your watching.